Well, hello everybody. It's Paul Lake, your personal physics pal, here with another physics problem solved. I'm gonna solve this problem. I'm gonna explain every step and uh, hopefully you'll find it um, uh, instructive. And if you do, if you like the video, please give it a like and, uh, and subscribe to my channel, especially if you're a physics student. Anyway, um, uh, let's uh, let's read the problem and then what do you need to know? Okay, so here's a problem and actually I got this from one of my uh, tutoring students. Um, so uh, we have a 70 kilogram box on a horizontal floor is pulled by a 400 newton force at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. <coughs> Excuse me, the force of kinetic friction is 75 newtons. A. Use a free body diagram to determine the acceleration of the box. And B. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction? Now, here's what you should be familiar with in order to try to solve this problem. You should be familiar with drawing free body diagrams and then using those diagrams with Newton's second law to solve problems. And then, of course, you need to know um, kinetic friction. What are the equations for it and so on? So, um, so, you know, review that stuff before you attempt this problem. And I encourage you to attempt the problem before you listen to the solution. Of course, that's totally up to you. All right, so uh, let's use given, find, and solve. Let's see, what are we given here? Uh, well, we've got a 70 kilogram box on a horizontal floor. So here's the floor. And then here's a box on that floor. And the, the box has a mass of 70 kilograms. And uh, it's being pulled by an applied force. And I, I, I call it F sub A for applied force. Um, different te teachers use different variables. Um, and it's at a 45 degree angle. Like that. And then we have a force of friction, which I'll just draw on here. And we have a force of friction. And that force of friction is 75 Newtons. And of course, if the thing's moving to the right, the friction will oppose that. And then what are we trying to find? Well, we want to know what is the acceleration of this crate due to, that, due to these forces. And then uh, part B, we want to know what is the coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay. So let's solve it. I really encourage you to set up your problems really nicely like this. Try, if, if it's appropriate, draw a picture of the problem and then show what's given around, around it because then you really understand the problem. If you can draw a picture of it, you, you, you can get it. And then really clearly identify what you're, what you're looking to find. Well, in order to find acceleration when I'm dealing with force, um, I have a procedure that I'd like you to follow. And that it, and the first step is given, find, and solve, doing this. And the second step is drawing a free body diagram. So free body diagram, I like, to, some people draw a dot and you can certainly do that. I like to actually draw the object. I, I just think it's easier to visualize, but it's totally up to you. Okay, so uh, here's my object. Now what, Outside forces are acting on it. Well, we have these given forces. We have this applied force. And then, of course, we have this force of friction. Now, there are, um, there are some other forces here. Uh, of course, it has mass, and we're going to assume we're on Earth here. So we're going to draw the force of gravity like that. And then, uh, of course, the ground is pushing up on it with a normal force. And notice what I did here. I drew the normal force shorter than I drew the, the weight force. And why is that? Well, because this applied force is lifting up. And so to support the weight of the crate, you, you, the normal force doesn't have to support all the weight. It just has to support a little bit of it. Okay. Now, um, so th these are all the outside agents that are acting on it. The floor is pushing up on it. The Earth's mass is pulling down on it. We've got the supply force and we've got friction. Those are the outside forces acting on my crate. Now, one thing I want you to do, so I want you to 
always, next to your free body diagram, identify what you want to be the X direction and the Y direction. I always draw up my X and Y axis like that. And then, if there are forces that are not lined up with your X and Y axis, show their components as dashed lines. So here my, here's my applied force. Now my applied force is pulling to the right with that much force, and it's pulling up with that much force. And of course, if this is uh, 45 degrees right here, then this will be Fa cosine 45 degrees, right? Because this, this component is adjacent to the angle, and that's why we use cosine. And remember the FA here, this like makes a little right triangle, doesn't it? And, and this applied force is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle gives us the adjacent leg. And then of course, FA sine theta gives us the, you know, we use sine because this is opposite, this is the side of the right triangle that's opposite of that angle. So that's a little trigonometry here, you, you should know. Okay, so, uh, and now I'm ready to apply Newton's second law to this. And um, so let's sum the forces in the x direction. That will equal mass times acceleration in the x direction. Um, and this is really Newton's second law, because when I add up all the forces in the x direction, I get the net force in the x direction. And the net force in the x direction is equal to ma where A here is, is the X component of the acceleration. Okay, then I look at my free body diagram. What forces have I drawn on this free body diagram are in the X direction? Oh, FA, not, not FA, FA cosine 45 degrees. Because FA is not in the X direction, but a component of it is. Oh, by the way, notice how I drew the components as dashed lines. That's to distinguish this as being a component of a force that's already been drawn on the free body diagram. Very important that you do that. Okay, and then minus, and minus because it's, it's in the negative direction, the force of friction. So uh, we've just summed all the forces. These are the only two forces in the x direction. We have this minus this, this is in the positive x direction, and this is minus because the force of friction is in the negative x direction, and that's gonna equal ma. Now, what do I know? I know this, I, I, well, obviously I know the angle, and the force of friction is given here, and the mass is given, and here's what I'm trying to find, the acceleration. So now I can just solve for it directly so that's going to be Fa cosine 45 minus the force of friction divided by the mass. We just have to divide both sides by mass. And now I can plug in my values. Uh, Fa was given to be 400 newtons times the cosine of 45 degrees minus 75 newtons divided by the mass, which is given to be 70 kilograms. Okay, now punch all that into your calculator, and I got 3.0, when you round it off, 3.0 meters per second squared. There you go. Now, um, oh, this is all for part A. Now, what about part B? Well, we want the coefficient of kinetic friction. Well, what's, what's the basic equation, uh, or how, how is kinetic friction defined? The coefficient of kinetic friction is, by definition, the ratio of the force of friction divided by the normal force. Or you, you, you might see it like this, you know, the, the, the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force, and so I've just rearranged it to look like this. All right, well, uh, do we know what the force of friction is? Yes, it's given to be 75 newtons, but do we know what the normal force is? No, and we can't just assume it's equal to the weight. So what are we gonna do to figure out what that normal force is? Well, I'm gonna sum the forces in the y direction, and that will equal ma in the y direction. 
Well, what are the forces in the y direction? Well, we have the normal force. And that's what we're going to try to find here because we don't know what it is yet. With, uh, with normal force and then plus, and the reason it's plus because it's in the positive direction. The applied force times the sine of that angle and then minus the weight, mg. Okay, so these are all the forces. Looking at my free body diagram, I've got one, two, three forces that are in the y direction. So I add them together. And remember when I say add, um, some of them are in the negative direction. Uh, the weight is down, that's negative. All right, so, and by the way, don't, when you plug in g, don't put in negative 9.8 because I've already accounted for the direction. Of it. I've already made it minus, so if you put in negative 9.8 there, you're going to, um, you're putting in a negative twice, and, and so you're going to get the wrong answer. Um, what is the acceleration in the y direction here? Well, think about it. The crate's going to be pulled to the, to the right. Its motion is constrained. Its motion is constrained to move, you know, in the horizontal direction. It's not going to fly up into the air. So, um, the acceleration in the y direction is zero. So this lets me solve for the normal force. That's going to be equal to the weight minus the applied force times the sine of the angle. I'm now ready to plug in my values. And this is 70 kilograms times 9.8. Remember, gravity pulls with 9.8 newtons of force for every kilogram of mass. That's one way of thinking about gravity. How much force do you get per kilogram? Now, if it's in free fall, that turns into meters per second squared is the acceleration. But I like using g like this when I'm trying to figure out what the force is. Uh, that's a way of thinking about it. Um, this is 400 newtons times the sine of 45 degrees. <clears throat> and now um, we just plug all that into the calculator and when I did I got 403 newtons so now I know what the normal force is and I know what the force of friction is so now I can solve for mu so mu, the kinetic friction is the force of friction which was given to be 75 newtons divided by the normal force that I calculated. And when I plug those into my calculator, I get a value of 0 0.19. Oh, and what, uni what units would it have? Um, well, it's dimensionless because right newtons cancel newtons. But you can also think of it as it's, you get 0.19 Newtons of friction for every Newton of normal force. So it's perfectly okay to think of this as being 0.19 Newtons per Newton. But of course, Newtons cancels Newtons. And so usually we just write it as 0 0.19. But I often tell my students, think of it as 0 0.19 Newtons of friction force for every Newton of normal force. That's a good way of thinking about it. All right. So hopefully this all made sense. Okay. Uh, hey, if you did find this helpful, hey, give it give it a like. I'd appreciate that and subscribe. And uh, I have lots of other um, physics problems solved on my YouTube channel. And I also have them organized on a Google Doc, which, and you can find the link to that Google Doc in the description for this video. So anyway. Uh, thank you for your attention and good luck in your physics classes and until next time, may the net force be with you.